Good afternoon, everyone. It's Steve, KI5JUF. How's everyone doing today? So today, I thought I would make a video on a piece of hardware that I have on my antenna. And these are some braces. And I've had several uh, subscribers ask, where did I get these? Where did these come from? And so forth. So I had a little extra time today in Abilene. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to run up to Bible Hardware. And I'm going to find these things. Because this is where Dad got them. So there they are. So what I'll do next is I'll go ahead and uh, we'll start going through. And I'll show you where I got them. Okay, there they are. <laughs> I found them. So these plates, these are actually called mending plates, and they're used for fence work where you would like mend a fence. I guess the old expression, mending fences or so forth. Uh, but uh, that, that's where, that's what they're called. So, and there they are right there. So what I'll do, I'll go on the next picture. I'll show you a little more detail on them. Okay, there is the part number for them. Uh, they're made by a company called WeatherGuard. And this is the part number for the 12 inch uh, length. And each one of those are individually 12 inches. And then you just stack them together uh, with some quarter inch bolts. So that's the part number. And this here is the barcode. That's actually the full label right there and the description. So you see the full label there. Uh, now, I got this one at Bar Bible Hardware, but you could probably Google WeatherGuard and you could probably find them there also. Now, this is where I found them in Bible Hardware. They have a section called Gate, uh, and I think there's uh, some other stuff in there. I can't read what that other stuff was, Connect, and I can't read the other one. But that's where I found it in Bible Hardware. So what you might want to do is ask for like your gate hardware, fencing, uh, you can see they have some break br br brackets and so forth down here. So uh, that's where they were at Bible Hardware. So what I decided to do is I said, well, not everybody has a Bible Hardware. So I went to Home Depot and I went on a search and guess what? I found them there. And there they are at Home Depot. They're available. They're a little bit different, but you can still use them though. The, instead of having the uh, the way the holes are staggered a little bit and uh, I'll show you where uh, what the part number is there's the part number they may they're made by a company called uh, what is that company called uh, let's see here zinc plated ever built so again it's the same size 12 inches uh, and there's the part number and the barcode and there's the barcode right there mending plate so they are available at Home Depot uh, zinc plated and they're about four dollars and fifteen cents I think the ones at Bible were like 325 so that kind of gives you a price comparison so uh, there they are and of course guess what in Home Depot there's a section called mending plates so if you go to Home Depot you will be able to find the mending plates and who knew? <laughs> They're all right there. I just had no idea. So anyway, that's the mending plate. So we'll keep, uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take you through some additional hardware, uh, where I got it, uh, the pictures and how I used it. So it kind of gives you uh, an overview of, of what my antenna system looks like, at least hardware wise. Okay. So this is the first part of the hardware that I use. Uh, this is what we what we do here is we use these to secure the nylon rope and to protect the nylon rope so that it doesn't get damaged over time. This picture here kind of gives you an idea of how we use the clamps. Uh, and also you can kind of see in the lower part of the picture how we actually wrap the rope around that little, um, I don't know what you want to call it, I call it like a Pac-Man thing, but it's actually got its mouth closed, I guess is the best description I can have. But you can see there we've got... Uh, uh, the rope wrapped around there and that actually protects the rope so it doesn't rub. Here's another picture of showing a little more detail. Now what we always do is we use two of these little hasp clamps, I guess you would call them a rope clamps. We use one right at the point where the rope is uh, comes together from that protective clamp and then we use one about an inch or two away. One thing we did also is we took a little uh, like a grill lighter, which you would like light a grill with, and we also uh, burned the edges so that the rope didn't fray. This is this is another part that we use uh, 
we also use these on the antennas so uh, I'll show you some pictures here of what this looks like this is basically this is uh, uh, it's rated for 660 pounds I don't think we would ever need that much weight but this happened to be one we had just happened to find in the store and and the size you want to make sure the size is correct you don't want to get this too large because if you do you might not be able to get it into some of the clamps particularly on the Rhone tower that we use and I'll show you that here shortly this is where we actually use uh, use that clamp and you can see there that clamp is its purpose is to connect the turnbuckle uh, to that hasp clamp or whatever you want to call it that actually goes to our uh, pole where we have it secured. And this here kind of illustrates how we would use this. Uh, you see the Roan pole, the Roan 30 that we purchased has uh, these rings on it and those rings are very important because uh, there are certain size and you can see the additional hardware that we had to use to actually make those connections to that Roan pole. So the next thing is the turnbuckle. Now this turnbuckle is pretty cool because if you don't know how to use it, what I did was I took two pieces of rope and kind of tied one to a pole and I tied one, I held the rope and I practiced uh, t turning the turnbuckle and you it, it's it's kind of reverse but you, you have to get the feel for it but the beauty of the turnbuckle is it will allow you to pull up any tension that you might have in the rope uh, or on your guy wire uh, and it'll do a real nice job and what I did was I got mine where they were tight but then I took this here and I actually used it to actually seize them up or bring them up a little bit tighter so it's pretty easy to use this is another piece of hardware that we use. This actually um, was just part of some of the connections that we did and, and so forth. And I'll show you some pictures of how we use this guy also. I don't I didn't have the I couldn't find him at, at, at Home Depot, so go imagine there's so much stuff today you just can't find anywhere. So that's one of the pieces of hardware. And there it shows you where we use that little piece of hardware. We used it on each side of the turnbuckle. Also notice on the turnbuckle, I put a tie wrap in it so it can't come undone. Uh, I don't know if there's a better way to do it, but the tie wrap seemed to do the serve the purpose to keep it unwinding. And I think by the design of the turnbuckle, I don't think it will ever unscrew because it's actually reversed the way you might normally unscrew something. So, but anyway, that's just an example. All right, this is important. This is the nylon rope that we use. This is a special rope. We got it from DX Engineering. And it's sun resistant, UV resistant, and uh, it's it's extremely good quality. And um, I recommend anytime you use you use guy wires with the, the nylon rope or a, particularly a hoist to bring up a dipole antenna or something, always use this this type of material. Don't go buy rope at Home Depot that's cheap rope, nylon rope, because the sun will destroy it. It will destroy it. But this this I've had this stuff up for about a year and a half and. It's as good as the day I put it up. This is the part number for it right here. This is where we got it. I should have flipped that picture around, but anyway, that's the part number. Just showing you the other side of the roll. All right, now that we've gone over the hardware, uh, this is some close-ups of what I did when I mounted mine. You see there, it's got some U-clamps. Uh, that's a Roan, a Roan 30 pole, and uh, now some of these holes we did have to drill them out to, to uh, use quarter inch, and I would recommend using quarter inch bolts because that's a little bit heavier duty uh, than some of these other bolts. And we, like I said, mine's been up for a year and it's been, you know, rock solid, hadn't had any problems with it. This is a little bit more of a close up, just kind of showing you the quarter inch bolts. We use, of course, lock washers, always use lock washers. Uh, you know, you can use a little Loctite, the blue type Loctite, but uh, pr always use lock washers because you definitely don't want these things working their way out. And here is where we mount the Comet GP1. So you, basically what we did, uh, we just spaced the uh, bars apart to match the Comet uh, mounting fixture. And uh, that was, you know, that was that was the easy part. Just uh, Comet makes a really good uh, antenna fixture, so... This one here shows the other side. Uh, again, I think these were 5 16 U clamps that we used. Uh, and the, the, the nice thing about this is we thought it was going to sag or drop on the outer part of it, but it actually, uh, if you get these tightened up and get everything tightened up pretty equally, evenly, uh, it, it it's, it's rock solid. It doesn't go anywhere. 
So real quick here, I thought I would show you some of the grounding. This is actually a Roan uh, base plate that actually goes into the ground. Uh, I've talked about grounding on another video. Uh, I've got two eight foot poles that are about eight feet apart. Uh, and all of it's tied together and all the antennas, but this is just the way we did uh, the grounding. We also used a special grease called copper grease, which we use it. Uh, it's like a, for lack of a better word, it it's, looks like copper and it's a luber. It's like a paste. Here's another picture showing this, just a plate that goes in the ground. There again, you can see the copper grease on it right there. So that's just another picture. So this is our little box here. I think we actually got this at Lowe's and what we did, we met, we used a hole saw and drilled a, I think it was a four, four and a half or three and a half inch hole in the back in the center. And we put a PVC pipe in it and we uh, affixed it to the gray box. And then what we did was we drilled a, uh, I think a four inch hole in the barn on one side and then on the other side, which was a job. We got that done, but that was tricky. And here you see where we actually bring the cables in through the bottom. Now these aren't actually, what we did, we bought uh, conduit or uh, CGB fittings or whatever you want to call them. We cheated. We just bought them large enough that we could actually run the entire PL259 connector through. And then we just shoved a bunch of rags in there to keep the moisture and the bugs out. So that's what we did on that. And then the next one is, uh, this is kind of coming up from the bottom. So... That shows you that what that looks like. Like I said, each one. We do have a spare right there, and of course we got the ground rod that goes through it too. This is where it comes in through the back. And uh, again, you can see uh, drilling that hole was really tricky with the hole saw and metal, but we got it done, so it was pretty cool. We had our neighbor over to help us. <laughs> and this is it from afar. So you can kind of see this is where everything came in together. So doesn't look too pretty down there but it it gets the job done and we didn't have to cut any coax or do any strange stuff so that was uh that was pretty fun we got that done so that's underneath my work my table all right folks well that's it for the video i hope this comes out okay we've been practicing using this headset and dubbing in the audio so hopefully uh it sounds okay this is kind of a practice video so we're getting close to the end and again thanks for watching from kf5juf and have a great weekend. I got some phone calls to some friends I got to make here shortly about some ham stuff. So thanks again. Appreciate you watching.